The reaction between nitric acid and potassium produces potassium nitrate and hydrogen gas. Before we read the rest of the question, let's try to write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. Nitric acid it has the chemical formula of HNO3, and this is usually in a solution, so the state here is aqueous. Potassium by itself is a metal, so solid at room temperature, and the reaction between the two produces potassium nitrate, which is an ionic compound. Now potassium is in group one and nitrate also has a charge of minus one. The ratio between potassium ion and nitrate ion should be one to one. That means the empirical formula for this compound is simply KNO3. And this is also in an aqueous form. Hydrogen gas has the formula of H2. It's a diatomic molecule. Hydrogen atom doesn't exists on its own and it prefers to be in its diatomic form due to the ability of hydrogen of completing its outermost valence shell and this is in the gas form. Before we continue let's check whether this equation is balanced. The number of hydrogens is not balanced there's only one on the left hand side while there's two on the right hand side so the first thing we can do is add a two here. By adding a two here we've multiplied the number of nitrate molecules on the left by two which means on the right-hand side, we should also multiply the potassium nitrate, which contains the nitrogen and oxygen atoms, the same. Now, obviously, by multiplying potassium nitrate by two, the number of potassium atoms will not be balanced. And we can fix this by simply adding two in from the potassium. This way, all of the elements should be equal in number on both sides. Okay, let's keep reading the question. What volume of 0.25 mole per liter solution of nitric acid is required to completely react with 15 grams of potassium. We should first find the number of moles of potassium in 15 grams. By dividing the mass by the molar mass potassium, which is 39.10 grams per mole. And this gives a number of 0.384 moles. The ratio of reaction between nitric acid and potassium is two to two or one to one, which means Every one mole of potassium will require one mole of nitric acid to react. So the number of moles of nitric acid that's required in this reaction is also equal to 0.384 moles. I'll write the reason in the bracket following this. This is a one-to-one -one reaction ratio. The question is asking what volume of 0.25 mole per liter solution of nitric acid is required. We already have the number of moles of nitric acid we need. And we know that moles is equal to the concentration of the solution multiplied by the volume of the solution. Rearranging this equation, we'll get the volume of the solution is equal to the number of moles divided by the concentration. So the number of moles will be 0.384 divided by the concentration of 0.250. The unit in the numerator is moles and the unit in the denominator is moles per liter. So the moles and moles will cancel out for the remaining volume that we are trying to calculate will be in liters because we're dividing by per liter. And the answer here is 1.53 liters. We've used two numbers in from the question, 0 0.250, which has three significant figures and 15.0, which also has three significant figures. That's why I leave my final answer here as 1.53, three significant figures. 43.50 milliliters of a 0.1 mole per solution of sodium hydroxide is required to completely react with a 25.00 milliliter hydrochloric acid solution. Calculate the concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution. This is an example of an acid-base reaction you will come across quite commonly in chemistry. Sodium hydroxide is an ionic compound. Sodium is in group one, so its ionic form is sodium plus. And hydroxide is a common polyatomic ion that has a formula of OH-. Because of these charges, we will know that the ratio between sodium and hydroxide in this ionic compound is 1 to 1. So the empirical formula for sodium hydroxide is NaOH. And because it's in a solution form, we'll write this as an aqueous state. Hydrochloric acid is a type of covalent compound because it's formed between two non-metals and has the formula of HCl and it is also a solution. This is an example of an acid plus base reaction which will form 
an ionic compound between the metal in the base, so sodium, and chloride in the acid. This is known as a salt, sodium chloride, which is also table salt. And the leftover hydrogen in the acid and the hydroxide ion in the base will combine together to form a molecule of water, H2O. The sodium chloride is in an aqueous form, as it dissolves quite well in water, and water is in the liquid form at room temperature. Before we move on to the next step and perform the calculations, it's important to check that this equation is in fact balanced. So let's go through all the elements. We have one sodium on the left and right, we have one oxygen on the left and right, we have two hydrogens on the left and two hydrogens in the water on the right. And finally, we have one chlorine on the left and right as well. So this equation is already balanced. I don't need to add any numbers in front of any of the chemicals. So we're given the volume as well as the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. Given these two numbers, I can calculate the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide in the solution by multiplying the concentration in mole per liter or the molarity by the volume, 43.50 in liters. So I need to change this from milliliters into liters by dividing by a thousand. This gives an answer of 0 0.00435 moles. Since the reaction ratio between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid is one to one, the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that will completely react with 0 0.00435 moles of sodium hydroxide is the same number. So 0 0.00435 moles of hydrochloric acid. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. We're given the volume in the solution for hydrochloric acid and we need to calculate concentration. So concentration or molarity is equal to the moles divided by the volume. The moles of hydrochloric acid is 0 0.00435 divided by the volume, which will be 0 0.025. Again, I've changed the 25 milliliters into liters by dividing by 1000 because I want my final answer in moles per liter, not per milliliter. That's usually the accepted unit for molarity or concentration. And here's where I get 0 0.174 moles per litre. Or you can write capital M for molar for short. Taking a look at the numbers, 43.50 is 4 sig figs, and so is 25.00. And 0 0.100 is 3 significant figures because the two trailing zeros after decimal point are significant. So I'll leave this answer as 3 significant figures. Excess calcium carbonate is added to a 500 milliliter solution of hydrochloric acid to produce calcium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. All right, again, let's start by writing a chemical equation. Calcium carbonate is a ionic compound formed between calcium ion, Ca2+, and carbonate, which is a polyatomic ion of the formula of CO3, 2 minus. The empirical formula for calcium carbonate is CaCO3. In this case, we do not know what state the calcium carbonate is in. It depends on whether the calcium carbonate is solid in an undissolved form or it's already been made into a solution, in which case it will be aqueous. So we can simply just write solid. It won't change the actual ratio of the equation for us in this case. And we'll add this to hydrochloric acid, which has a form of HCl, and this will be aqueous as it is a solution. The reaction between the two will produce calcium chloride. Now calcium is Ca2 plus in an ionic form and chloride is Cl minus. So the empirical formula for C uh, for calcium chloride wouldn't just be CaCl. In fact, you need to have two times the number of chlorine as the calcium to match the charges. And this will be also in an aqueous form. Plus carbon dioxide, which is CO2. This will be gas at standard conditions plus water, which would be liquid. Okay, let's check if this is balanced. Calcium, we've got one on both sides. Carbon, we've got one on both sides. Oxygen, we've got three in the calcium carbonates and three combined together in the carbon dioxide and water. However, the chlorine is not balanced. There's two chlorines on the right and there's only one chlorine on the left. So we'll need to multiply the hydrochloric acid by two. This also helps me balance the number of hydrogens because now I've got two hydrogens on the left and two hydrogens in the water molecule on the right hand side. If 2.2 moles of carbon dioxide is produced, what was the concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution? So we know that the moles of CO2 is 2.2 moles. Now let's compare the ratio 
every two moles of hydrochloric acid will produce one mole of carbon dioxide, assuming all of the hydrochloric acid is reacted. So the moles of hydrochloric acid is equal to 2.20 divided by 2, which will be 1.10 moles. So this is assuming that all of this HCl is fully reacted. Now, how do we know that's the case? This is where the keyword, which is the first word of the question, excess calcium carbonate becomes very important. This is implying that you're adding more than enough calcium carbonate to make all of the hydrochloric acid react. So the calcium carbonate here is an excess. You've got some leftover unreacted, but all of the hydrochloric acid is fully reacted because you've got less of this. And that's why we can work backwards by dividing by two to find the moles of hydrochloric acid from the moles of carbon dioxide. Again, concentration is equal to the moles divided by volume. The moles of HCl is 1.10 moles and we'll divide by the volume of the solution of HCl, which would be 500 milliliters. And this is equivalent to 0.5 liters. And this gives me the answer of 2.20 moles per liter. 2.20 is the number that we use in this calculation, and this has three significant figures. So I'll leave the final answer here as three sig figs as well. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. One even more, become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.